Welcome to Noir Alley. I'm Eddie Muller. I hope you're having a good start to a fresh year. Today, I've got one of the earlier offerings of the film noir era, The Glass Key, made at Paramount in 1942. It's based on the novel by Dashiell Hammett, published in 1931 as his follow-up to The Maltese Falcon. Hammett is perhaps the essential figure in the history of crime fiction. His cynical worldview and terse narrative style pretty much defined the hard-boiled genre. There are plenty of readers and writers who hold the glass key in even higher regard than the Falcon. Don't ask me to choose, although Hammett did. He thought the glass key was his best book. Both the Maltese Falcon and the glass key were made into movies in the 1930s when Hammett was at the height of his popularity. Warner Brothers tried twice with the Falcon, but neither the first version made in 1931 nor a 1936 remake called Satan Met a Lady came close to capturing the attitude or crispness of Hammett's writing. John Huston, Humphrey Bogart, and an exceptional supporting cast accomplished that in 1941. The success of the third Falcon is partly what inspired Paramount to take another crack at the glass key. Back in 1930, the studio had paid 25 grand for the book prior to its publication with the intention of making it a starring vehicle for young Gary Cooper. Instead, Cooper appeared in another Hammett story, 1931's City Streets, based not on a novel, but an original story Hammett wrote specifically for the movies. The Glass Key was finally made in 1935 with George Raft, Edward Arnold, Claire Dodd, and a very young Ray Milland. It's not a bad film at all, certainly better than either version of the Maltese Falcon made that decade. Its director, Frank Tuttle, went on to make one of Paramount's biggest hits of 1942, This Gun for Hire, a milestone in the development of film noir. It was the breakout role for Alan Ladd and the first film to pair him with Veronica Lake. Audiences craved their cool and sexy chemistry, but Paramount was a little slow to catch on. It bet the house on Ladd, separate from Lake. Red Harvest, based on Hammett's classic novel about gang wars in a Midwest city, was to be Ladd's follow-up to this gun for hire. Jonathan Latimer wrote a crackerjack adaptation, but for reasons never totally clear, the film was shelved. Instead, Latimer set about scripting The Glass Key, since the studio still held rights to the book. Veronica Lake was not in the original cast. Paulette Goddard was going to co-star, but when she bowed out, Patricia Morrison stepped in. By then, however, box office receipts for this gun for hire changed Paramount's mind. America wanted Ladd and Lake. They became 40s versions of William Powell and Myrna Loy, albeit more tight-lipped and less inebriated. Powell and Loy, of course, had reached the heights of stardom as Nick and Nora Charles, characters created by Dashiell Hammett in The Thin Man, the last novel he ever wrote. In The Glass Key, Ladd plays Ed Beaumont, fixer for ward-healing gangster Paul Madvig, played by Brian Donlevy. Madvig is in love with Janet Henry, whose father is the reform candidate for governor. Madvig decides to prove his love by backing her father's bid for the state house an idea that doesn't sit well with his gangster cronies or his best pal, Beaumont. Pretty soon, there's a dead body, double crosses piling up all over the place, and Ed's caught in the middle between Madvig and rival racketeer Nick Varna. He also has to parry the advances of his boss's fiance, while enduring some vicious ministrations from Varna's henchman, William Bendix, in an especially thuggish performance. There's a lot going on in The Glass Key, even though the snappy script is not as complex as the book. The terrific cast includes Joseph Kalea as Nick Varna, with Richard Denning, Benita Granville, and Maroni Olsen in key supporting roles. Providing the noir atmosphere is German-born cameraman Theodore Sparkle, under the direction of Stuart Heisler, who keeps things popping at a brisk and sometimes brutal clip. From 1942, Here's the second screen version of Dashiell Hammett's classic novel of political corruption and betrayal, The Glass Key.